this Ektar and welcome to episode 6 of our Digimon Tamers review series. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the US Digivolving Lop 1 to Kirbymon figure. This episode was only made possible by Captain Marvelous. It's thanks to him that I was able to acquire this figure for review. Do check out his Instagram page which is linked in the description below, where he posts a ton of pics of awesome Digimon figures and merchandise. Now, out of all the figures in this review series, this figure has got to be the one that I had the toughest time getting a hold of. Not only is the figure rather rare, despite being re-released in Season 4 packaging, go figure, its transformation involves panels that are held on by simple pegs. While they don't fall off that easily if you're mindful of them, every single one of these figures that come up for sale secondhand is missing these panels. Kirbymon's ears evidently pop off very easily as well, but mine seem to require a lot of force in order to detach, and I'm not even going to try. But more on that later. Lopmon is one of my favourite Digimon personality-wise on the show, and it's great to actually have a physical representation of him. He doesn't really look 100% accurate to the show model, which was a bit more um, horizontally broad, but it's fine in its own way. In fact, one of the things that I have to give the designers credit for is taking the time and effort to make Lopmon and Terriamon look as close to each other as possible in toy form despite their significantly different transformations. Save for maybe a hinge or two, these figures don't share a single part. Now that's what I call impressive. Like Terriamon, Lopmon is a half and half transformer, where you simply flip the figure around for the alternate mode. Unlike Terriamon, the Kirbymon kibble is rather restrained and well contained to the back. In the correct configuration of the kibble, even Kirbymon's ears are held solidly in place. The only parts they could have done a better job in dealing with would have been Kirbymon's legs, which just fold up and don't lock in place or anything. Articulation-wise, though better than Terramon's, it's really nothing to write home about. Because Lopmon's ears become Kirbymon's arms, they have quite a bit of articulation, as they should. They go all the way around, they go in and out, they rotate at the elbow, and there is a very very slight elbow joint. As for his actual arms, they are on ball joints, they can go all the way around, in and out, they are even on a set of transformation hinges that allow you to bring his arms all the way across his body. And his legs are also posable on these diagonally cut rotational joints. It does at least allow you to lean him forwards and backwards, slightly. Alrighty, now it's time for one of the three great Angel Digimon to descend before us. Take Lopmon's arms and flip them around to become Kirbymon's arms. Pull out Lopmon's arms on these sets of hinges and tuck them in. Flip up Lopmon's feet and fold away his toes. We then flip the figure around. Take Kirbymon's legs and hinge them into place. Push the main pieces off to the side to free up the ears. Open the back of the figure. Flip out Kirbymon's head before closing the figure back up. Rotate the ears around and collapse them into the back of his head. And last but not least, we split open his fingers. and line up his main pieces by pressing the two side ones in. And here we have the Kirbymon mode, and boy is he tall! Now, even though I personally really like this figure, I do recognize the myriad of issues it has. Firstly, as mentioned earlier, these panels are all just packed into place and the transformation entails you pushing them in and pulling them out. They're still rather tight on my figure, but it's a rather poor engineering choice that leads to these being lost very very easily. But more readily apparent, this figure doesn't really look like Kirpimon, does it? If you look at any of his incarnations, you'd see that Kirbymon shares Lopmon's all black eyes. I don't think anyone, even Kirbymon fans, would disagree with me when I say that Kirbymon's design is already rather creepy. But with these eyes, it just bores into your soul, doesn't it? Secondly, these stripes on Kirbymon's face don't have a curve to them. 
Thirdly, the clown main section is not complete and doesn't go all the way around. Fourthly, he's missing his coattails that go off to the sides. And finally, the colours are just slightly off. Instead of a light pastel pink and yellow, we have a darker purpley pink and gold. But to be fair, despite all of those nitpicks, he's still recognisably Kerpimon. If you want a Kerpimon figure, this one's going to do just fine. However, I don't understand why they chose the vaccine version of Kerpimon as the alternate mode instead of, say, Antillamon or the virus Kerpimon. In the Tamer series, we never saw Lobmon turn into Kerpimon, and considering the fact that Antillamon shares a very similar body structure to Kerpimon, it would have been very doable design-wise. Not to mention, the vaccine Kerpimon also made very sparing appearances throughout the franchise as a whole, with just a very brief appearance in the O2 movie and in Frontier. You can't even have all three great Angel Digimon standing together as they never made a Digivolving or Funimon figure. To me at least, it would have made way, way more sense to have had the alt mode BV virus Kerpimon instead. Not only is the design arguably less creepy, it's just far, far cooler, imposing and more iconic. Being the rather memorable and frankly horrifying villain of both the O2 movie and the Frontier series, he could have made for such an amazing addition to any O2 or Frontier collection. The line would have really benefited from having more villain characters. Not to mention, Lobmon turned into the virus Kerpimon in the Battle Spirits game as well. Regardless, moving on, in terms of the kibble, it's rather par for the course for these half and half figures. Turn him around and there is Lobmon in full view. While that's still not too bad, sadly, the kibble also does extend to the underside of his arms. That means you can't get his signature, arms spread open to give you a hug pose, without exposing all of that kibble. Last but not least, articulation-wise, it's pretty much exactly the same as the lockdown mode, save for the fact that his arms are now hindered by his mane. They can still go in and out, rotate at the elbow, bend at the elbow, and his legs can also rotate at this diagonal joint. In conclusion, it seems that I've been rather harsh on this figure, but despite the issues I've pointed out, I still can't help but love it. Maybe it's because I spent so much time and effort in getting it, but regardless, the Lobmon mode complements Terriamons very nicely, and the Kirbymon mode is rather attractive in its simplicity and design, despite not being very accurate. It still exudes a rather commanding presence befitting of one of the great Angel Digimon, though I still would have preferred Lobmon to have turned into either Antillamon or the Virus Kirbymon. If you do manage to find one complete and for a decent price, I personally wouldn't hesitate to pick him up. So, this is Akta saying, see you guys in the next episode of our Digimon Tamers series of reviews. Boom! Alright, now it's time to open up this Warp Digivolving Kerpimon figure. This mint and sealed box Warp Digivolving Kerpimon figure. I know I'm going to regret this because this was really hard to get a hold of, but I need to do the review and I can't wait to, like, play with this figure. Uh, here's the back in case you're wondering what it is. Kerpimon, Bielzamon, Sakyamon. Alright, so here goes. I'm going to make the first incision. Make sure it's on camera, make sure you guys can see it and... Oh! Ah! 